How often do you think about being white? Either one of you. Almost never. Almost never? Almost never. Whoa, seriously? Yeah. yeah. Talk, can we, okay, talk about that. Hold the mic really close. Like, go, right. what do you, yeah, talk. Um, identity is kind of a funny thing already because you can just wake up and just decide you're different and there's no one saying otherwise. But um, yeah, I don't think I've ever really felt white, not just because my name, both of them are not American, English, or Western at all, but also because, um, you know, facial hair came in real quick. And that, that put me apart from the rest what, pretty like fast. in first or second grade? I had a mustache, like, sixth grade. Sixth grade? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you never think about being white. Not well, really. What about when you look at your mom? What, uh, uh, huh? What, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never look at your mom? How about when you're with your mom? Let me just ask you. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, my, both my parents are military, so their identities kind of, like, got separated from race when it got, like, beaten out of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, whenever I'm with my mom, we'll still go to, I don't think I'd do anything different, because I'm not sure what the question is, sorry. No, when no, I look okay, at my no, mom, no, like, she's my mom, but yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't look like my mom or my dad, I'm kind of like a blend of both. Yep. So I can look at both and see myself in both, but like, they're not part of my identity. First off. We're, this is an exploration at this point, right? We're totally exploring here. So there's no, there's no right or wrong, there's nothing. Okay, so, but it's a curiosity. So you, 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 rare, you basically never think about being white. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I live in an area where I'm blessed. I don't gotta deal with a lot of stuff that would like highlight that race in my head. What do you mean blessed? Like what? Uh, I came from an area where a lot of people are really accepting. You know, it's just south of D.C. You know the people in D.C. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. In Nova. Yeah. And, um, the, like, I'm, they don't care nearly as much as think as, like, other places I've lived in. Because mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in South Carolina, um, and I was born just after 9-11. So you can imagine having a brown dad and then two kids, my brother and I, who are somewhat brown, walking around, we get a lot of eyes on us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that was like early, right past 9-11, when tensions were really high with anyone that wasn't, you know, white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Isabella, how about you? What, how often do you think about being white? Um, so in Ecuador, where I, uh, the city where I'm from, which is the capital city, uh, most of my friends are, we all have like a European ancestry. Like most of us have double nationality. So we don't usually think as white because when we think about white, it's like, oh, American. We, like, we just think we're like mix of Ecuadorian and Europe, uh, European. So when you think about white, it's more like the, like the social classes mm -hmm. we have there because in my social class, like most of us look like me. Yeah. Like, we're white, you could say we're white. But then when you go to more rural areas, you see less white people. So I think it has more to do with your like social class. So when you say, when we talk about social class, what, what she's, well, you're talking about the upper class. Yeah. Yeah, because you wouldn't be here at Penn State if you weren't from the upper, like it, you, you're, this is Ecuador, y'all, right? Like, so you get, you need to be from the upper class to be able to come to a place like Penn State, unless you got a full scholarship for some reason. But, um, okay, so you don't, so in Ecuador, um, you're not thinking about whiteness per se, because that's largely like a, a, a an American concept, but you think about your Europeanness, like your European roots, colonial roots and so on. Uh-huh. Do you, do you talk about it with you in your family at all? Like, is that, is it part of the conversation or is it just kind of? It's just there. Like, we don't usually talk about with my family or friends about that. We're just, we're all mixes of different parts of the world. Have you ever done a DNA test? No. Did you, what I said about your nose, did you, have you ever thought, have you ever, your nose isn't that pronounced. No, I mean, listen. No, no, but that little bump right there, like there's just certain, I look at you and you're European for sure, but I'm yeah. really wondering I, about. I have like a direct line from Germany. Yeah. My, my great granddad was German and he came to Ecuador during World War II. Yeah. So I also have like a German nationality. Yeah. 
How often do you wrestle with being white differently than you wrestle with being not white? And by wrestle with, what I, I don't mean like struggle with. I just mean like, uh, like play with, you know, like kind of like it's in, it's in your mind. Like you're thinking about it. You're. I think about like, I've never really thought about whiteness as like the stereotype of being white yeah. as much as I like until I came here. Yeah. Because most of the people here are like that fit into the white stereotype. So I think like I just feel like I don't feel I don't feel represented with that white because I feel like different. I feel more like I could say a Latina and not necessarily white because I just feel different and like unique. So not I don't like I don't wrestle that much with it. Okay, so when you are walking down the street here, say like at Penn State or you're sitting in a classroom and when you like just like for example, look out over this class, right? Um, when, when you think about like where you fit in this classroom, is there, like, how do you think about that? Like who you fit in with, who your friends might be, who you, who you might connect with? Like, um, with that, I would, I have focused more than like the physical appearance, more than a, more than that with like language. I have, I've had an easier time with like people who come from Latin America. Yeah. So I don't think the physical appearance of like being white has been much of like a thing for me here. Uh huh. Uh huh. So do you did you start when you came to the U.S. Did you start thinking of yourself as Latina or as? Spanish? Yes, because I didn't think about that before. We were all just like similar. Yeah. So you're just you're just Ecuadorian, yeah. and you're of a particular European class in Ecuador. But yes. here you start getting pushed in. And, yes. And tell me, how is that for you? Like what? thoughts do you have or how did that happen uh, so I felt less white like because in Ecuador you are like mm, me and my social class were like white there yeah and here it isn't that much because there's like the Americans which fit into the white stereotype so I don't I couldn't say like I feel white as before uh-huh uh-huh right okay I got you I got you and so is there is there's and do you feel compelled? Have you felt compelled to identify as a minority here? Mm, like not as, not that much, but I could say so because I do feel different here than different. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And like Latinos are less than like the American people here, so it, you could say we are like a minority here. Uh huh. There are fewer people, yeah. less than. Yeah. 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 Even though class wise, you're in a, you're really in a very different class yes. than a lot of other folks here. The thing for me, at least with being mixed, but looking like me, I, I feel too Indian to be white, but I feel too white to be Indian. Okay. So it's, it's more like a, like you said, juggling because I don't fit in one category or the other, but I'm a blend of both. Yet I feel distinct from either. Like, I'm, I feel being pulled in that weird middle ground between the two mm -hmm. because, I mean, like I said when I first sat down, you can wake up and decide who you are as an identity, yeah. and you're the person that decides whether that's true or not. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, I'm not sure what I want to be or what I am, and I'm kind of just figuring that out as I go. Uh huh. Mm. Say, so, can you say more about that? Sure. Um, it's, I mean, I expect that like no one in this room at all knows who they are. Yeah. But I, I feel like I have time to decide who I am and who I'm going to be. So I'm not in a real rush to figure out what race I am, like who I like, what I do, whatever. I'm just trying to see what I like. What, what culture you want to embrace, yeah. right? What identity you want to embrace. That's exactly. sort of thing. Uh huh. There is a way in which, like, white, like, in, in this culture, like, we center many things around whiteness, okay? Many, many things have gotten, become centered around whiteness. And that's, that's just kind of a, that's a given, right? I mean, this, this is, uh, this is not, it has nothing to do, per se, with white people. It has everything to do with the group that 
has been able to capture the greatest amount of power. And so you, it's not even necessarily done on purpose. It's just done. Like you just move forward and you just expect that the world revolves around you and your life and your world. And you have the resources and the power to make that power. And I don't mean power as a negative thing. I just mean power. Like you're the one making stuff and developing stuff and one thing after another. And, and, and you're the ones that are like the spokespeople for whatever it is. And so life just becomes more centered around, around you and people who are like you. And that becomes kind of like normal. Like, so for example, when I ask someone, when I ask white people oftentimes like, hey, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you see? What do you see when you look in a mirror? right? And, and a lot of times people say, well, who do you see, right? I don't know. I just see me. Well, say more about that. Well, I don't know. I'm just like normal. It's like, wait a minute. What do you mean normal? You know, I, it's like you don't, even, you don't even get beyond that. You know what I mean? And so the issue is um, white people kind of learn to, we've been told to take a backstage a little bit, like back off, you know what I mean? Like come back, like, um, yeah, don't center yourselves, right? Like you center yourselves too much. So you need to back off a little bit. Okay. So, um, I think I want to kind of go there a little bit, right? Like how is that? Or what is that? Or how's it, how's it, how's that make sense? Can you walk us through a little bit about like what you see about white people? Yeah. So in my head, I've always, whenever I've talked to my friends about identity and stuff, I've found that like the general consensus is that white feels like a, like an unconscious standard that people think in America, like okay. even in communities that are mostly minorities, like it's, if I talk to them, some of them will still look in the mirror and be like, I'm Chinese, I'm Japanese, I'm half Korean, half, you know, but and then when I talk to white people, like my white friends, they're, um, it's, they're just them. It, it's yeah. like it's grown as a standard. Like I, they're just them. They're just, quote, again, I'll use that word normal. Mm -hmm. I'm just normal. Yeah. Like whatever normal is. Uh -huh. And it's like if, if you're the center, you're the standard, and everything else is around you, that's, there's no real way for like any complementary or equality if you feel like if someone is half white, half not, and they look in the mirror and they'll see something that's half normal, half not. Yeah. Like, how is that going to make you feel? Okay. When you don't even okay. know who you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yo, dude, interesting insight. Isabella. Yes. I, I also wanted to say about like stereotypes that like white people fit into with like, we're not, we're not like it, in our present day there is so much like social media and everything becomes universal like uh -huh. you have access to everything so there's that like white stereotype that you you think about like oh usa and like americans so yeah it's like very like a blonde person with like i don't know shorts uh, sneakers and like it's that stereotype so when you from from the perspective of ecuador when you, when you all think about this, think about you and your friends, you and your white friends, right? Of white, you and your white friends in Ecuador, right? That, that sounds so funny. Dude, does that sound so funny? Isabella and her white friends in Ecuador, but that's essentially what it is, right? Okay, so you and your white, when you think about the U.S., what, what's this classic kind of American, like who are you thinking about? Um, it's like, well, I don't want to be like mean or anything i'm just i just want to talk about like this general stereotype we have it's like a person who's like from a small town and they think like america is like everything like the best and that it doesn't get better than that and it's just like there we usually think about that stereotype as like people who are like ignorant to the rest of the world about other people and like other uh -huh. races too uh -huh. which it's they just think that's normal, like that's their yeah. stereotype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Huh. But do you think of white people when you think about the U.S.? Yeah, usually. Okay. Yeah. 
which is interesting, right? Because increasingly growing numbers of yeah. representatives of the, of, uh, like in, in media and so on, are not white people. Yeah. Like, you know, actors and performers and musicians and this sort of thing. Huh. Here's two things that I hear from you. Um, one, you are about as far as most people can go, as someone can go, who's saying that I've stepped into the world of being right in the center of my Indianness and my whiteness. And I, I'm so in it that I'm not even really thinking about it. I'm just being me. You, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not engaged because I, because I can tell, because you're a thinker right? It's pretty clear you're a thinker. And so it's not like you're just not thinking about this stuff. You're saying like, no, I'm just being right here. You're in that space where lots of people claim that they want to be. And, and Isabella, what I'm hearing from you is um, a re you're a thinker. Also, I mean, you know, you, really interesting ideas. And what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, you're in the space of exploring whiteness in a really different kind of way. And it's a way that maybe people here in the United States could think about exploring, but, but we don't. Like, we have a very kind of narrow way of seeing whiteness. And, and I think it'd be, we'd do really well to break out of that. Um, because white people, we don't give them a lot of latitude to go beyond what is expected. And whiteness is incredibly complex. It's just incredibly complex. And it's kind of like the, the other day I was having a conversation at a conference where I was and I was saying, you know, it's pretty amazing how often I hear people talking about the police and the police this and the police that. And, you know, like I had last couple of years, I had the opportunity to have many conversations with hundreds of police officers, like deep conversations. And I, I entered into the world of policing the complex world of policing. And I thought, man, if you think, if you want to have ever have an opinion about the police and how the police do and do, don't do their job and you've never talked to a single cop in your life, that's just about the dumbest thing I could ever imagine. And it's kind of like with white people. The people who are not white, who have this idea, have all these opinions about what it's like to be white, but don't really understand the, the complexities of what whiteness is. So.